Good morning, everyone. When we are back with more Barnstable this morning, I'm Sarah Colvin, and joining me live on the phone, I welcome our Chief of Police, Paul McDonald. Chief, good morning. Good morning, Sarah. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, Chief, of course, uh, last week we didn't have a, a whole heck of a lot to talk about. This week is, is completely different, a number of, of uh, pretty serious topics to discuss. I want to start out first, uh, of course, uh, hearing reports of a murder uh, over the weekend in Hyannis on Beth Lane. Now, what can you tell me about this incident? Uh, on Saturday morning, approximately 1.30 in the morning, we, res we responded to the area of 133 Beth Lane, Hyannis. Uh, we'd been there a couple of times earlier in the evening for a loud party. Apparently, it was the after-hours uh, party there. When the officers got there, there was one individual down in the street. Um, he was bleeding from the abdomen area. Um, the first two officers got there. They immediately began first aid. Upon the, uh, the arrival of the secondary officers, um, they, they uh, set up an inner and outer perimeter. Uh, they realized that the individual had actually been stabbed multiple times um, in the abdomen area. Um, after that, num numerous witnesses came, came forward. A um, suspect was identified very, very quickly. Um, Kelly Ridley was identified. Apparently, got into a verbal confrontation, which escalated, and Mr. Ridley had stabbed the individual. Uh, the individual was brought to the hospital, underwent surgery, uh, approximately 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, unfortunately, uh, he passed away. Uh, indeed. And so uh, we are hearing uh, as well that, as, as you mentioned, uh, Kelly Ridley uh, has, has been arrested for that. And he is a, a young man who has been in trouble with the law before, correct? He has been, he has been arrested uh, multiple times. Naturally, he was on uh, probation at the time of this. Um, he's only 18 years old. He's a recent graduate of Boston High School. Um, these individuals, they were known to each other. Um, what happened is they got a verbal confrontation. That's why we were called earlier in the evening. Um, however, that was, that was broken up. Um, the individuals were separated. They both went their ways. Um, one of them came back to the house, and Mr. Ridley actually lives at that residence, 133 Beth Lane. And then the uh, confrontation continued. They went outside, and, uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, uh, he got stabbed. Indeed. And so was there another victim as well, Chief, uh, in, in this incident on Beth Lane? Uh, yes, there was a second indivi individual, a Michael James. Um, he was, uh, he was uh, somewhat older, 43 years old, and I believe he is the uncle of Mr. Ridley. And it's unsure of what his involvement is in it. Um, we believe he was actually trying to separate the two individuals. And sometime while he was trying to do that, um, he also got stabbed in the abdomen. He was brought to Cape Cod Hospital in a critical condition, but he's expected to make a full recovery. Sure, and obviously this is being investigated as a homicide, and Mr. Ridley now is, uh, is being held without bail. He was, he was originally arrested on probation warrants, but as of yesterday, uh, he was subsequently charged with murder. He was arraigned yesterday and is being held without bail. Great. Uh, so, Chief, uh, of course, uh, definitely, I think, one of those uh, isolated incidents, certainly um, not anything that I think residents in the, in the area should be too terribly concerned about uh, violence. Of oh, course, no, absolutely uh, not. This was not, a, this was not a random event. These two individuals were well known to each other, well, well known to us. It's just a very, very unfortunate incident. You know, as we know about the car crash, which happened, uh, happened yesterday, uh, this has been a tough weekend for the town of Boston. Uh, even, even though these, these kids, you know, one was murdered and the other kid is probably going to spend the rest of his life in jail. That's unfortunate. Indeed. Chief, let's talk a little bit about that crash, of course, uh, outside yep. of the jurisdiction of Barnstable Police, but affecting uh, three local people, um, two uh, notably uh, Barnstable High School graduates, certainly a, a tragedy for our community. Oh, it certainly is. You know, uh, you know the Galvin kid, I, I don't know the parents that well, but Kippy Diggs, you know, I know Kippy Diggs very, very well. You know, he's a town employee, works for DPW, and Kippy's been around for a long, long time, a real nice kid, and this, uh, it, it's very unfortunate for his uh for the for a son, I don't know. I don't know how you survive this. You know, as a parent of two, I I, I have no idea how anybody survives this incident. It's, it's horrific. Absolutely, and certainly, um, you know, the, 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 one of those unavoidable things. Um, be very careful getting on the highway in the correct direction. Um, certainly, uh, but that was not their fault. It was the other driver. Well, that's unfortunate. What was it? Two months ago, up in Burlington, Vermont. I mean, the similar thing happened. Uh, you know, I think five kids from one of the local high schools was killed when another car was traveling uh, in the wrong direction. You know, and it hit the car head on and killed five kids from one of the local high schools up in Burlington, Vermont. So, Chief, uh, over this weekend, uh, drug take back day. Of course, I know that there's a receptacle that is there 24 7 at Barnesville Police Headquarters, but this is really a day to kind of raise awareness for that. So, tell me a little bit about how that went. Well, it, it actually was last Saturday. We have it um, you know, twice a year. Um, and this, last week we had it, and we only had uh, 10 individuals came in, uh, which was the lowest number by far. 
but it, but it just shows that the receptacle that we have downstairs in the front lobby, people are using it on a daily basis because when all said and done, um, we turned in 17 boxes to DEA with approximately 368 pounds of, uh, of narcotics that was turned in. So I think that was the most that we've ever turned in, even though the least number of people showed up on that Saturday morning because people now, they're not, they're not waiting for the DEA um, turn-in day. They come in every day and, they, and they're using the receptacle all the time. So it, uh, it's, it's a great thing, great thing for the community. Sure, Chief. And, and just why is it important for people to dispose of their unwanted, unused, or expired prescription drugs that using that receptacle or on the drug take back days? Well, if, you know, if you're looking at most of the B&Es and burglaries that we are covering, you know, in the old days when I first saw police officers who break in the house because they're stealing TVs or stereos or whatever, you know, now when people break in the houses, they're going right to the medicine cabinet because they're looking for any type of narcotics that you might have, have in the medicine cabinet. And also, the other thing is we do not want people to improperly dispose of these things. You know, we don't want to flush down the toilet, don't put them down the sink. We don't want them to go into the water supply. You know, if you do not want to turn them in the police department, you can certainly turn them into the landfill, landfill but you have to grind them up first, mix them up with um, um, cough, coffee grounds, and yeah, then they can be disposed of, and then they will be incinerated. But the easiest way is just bring them into the PD, put them in the front lobby, and we'll take care of it. Absolutely. Uh, good to know. Chief, I want to go back and talk just uh, briefly about a, a sentencing that I read about uh, today, of course, uh, in connection with an incident that happened back in 2012, I believe. That, yes, Andrew Stanley. That was a murder on, murder on Otis Lane. Uh, this was the second trial. Two individuals were already sentenced, already found guilty, I believe, two weeks ago. Um, and they, they are serving a life sentence for first-degree murder. The third suspect, uh, he pled out last week, um, and I believe he pled out to a 16 years in a day sentence, which means he has to do a minimum of 16 years. But after that, he's also been charged with a federal offense. We'll have to do four years after that. So he's looking at a minimum of 20 years. Uh, indeed. And so. there's one last individual, <clears throat> excuse me, there's one last individual I believe that's trial except for next month. Great. Uh, well, we'll stay up to date on that. Uh, Chief, I want to end on a, on a positive note. Of course, uh, Hyannis Open Streets was held over the weekend. Another very successful event. Uh, how did it go uh, from from your perspective? From our perspective, it's no problem whatsoever. We're glad to help out. It's, it's, it's a great it's a great occasion for downtown Hyannis. You know, I know this was the second one, um, and I believe they're going to try to do four, two in the spring and two and two in the fall. So it worked it worked out very very well. Well received by the community. Great. And Chief, uh, were, were there any traffic issues regarding uh, that shutdown of Main Street on Sunday? or did people seem to uh, to understand uh, how to go around uh, the closure of Main Street? Yeah, we put the traffic boards out. You know, there were enough volunteers, enough police officers to detour around them, and I don't believe we received any complaints whatsoever. Great. Well, Chief, I thank you so much, as always, for joining us here on Barnstable this morning. A pleasure to have you on the program, and we will check in with you again next Tuesday. Have a great day. We'll talk to you then. Thanks much. Take care. Bye-bye. Chief of Police of Paul McDonald joining us uh, as he does every Tuesday morning. Much more to come. We are going to have our Board Committee and Commission Roundup in just a moment.